Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Paragon the Overprime build video. And if you're looking for an awesome support build, you have come to the right place here at Mom's Basement. Because today I present you my favorite Nabash support build. And if this Rampage thinks he can kill me, he's damn wrong. Because I just stay alive long enough so my team can take care of him. And with that, let's dive right into the build and let's directly start with the cheat sheet. So, as I said, today we are talking about our Nabash Medic support build. What is this build all about? You heal them, you buff them, you protect them. You are your team's anchor. Everything resolves around you. You're not the guy for the killing. So let's start with the obvious, with the starting items. As a support you want to run the Dekima Gemstone of Abundance, some nice stats there, but you actually want that for the free Watcher's Eye. Because remember, Watcher's Eye usually is 50 gold and you saved it with every time you travel back. You also want to upgrade that Dekima Gemstone of Abundance early, so you get a second Watcher's Eye for free. But we will talk about that later when we talk about the items. And then the rechargeable mana ampoule. That's pretty straightforward, pretty good for Nabash because he can heal himself. That's why I prefer the mana one. Anyway, if you go back and you have your lane uh, under control and you can afford it, go for the rechargeable health ampoule as well. So with the starting items down, let's talk a little bit about the items we are gonna run with Nabash Medic and why we are gonna use them. I like to start to upgrade my Dekima Gemstone first. Maybe not to tier 3, but tier 2 would also be okay. But those three Watcher's Eyes are really great and help you win games because visibility is key in Paragon the Overprime. It also comes with some helpful stats like Mana, uh, Mana Regen and Magical Power. So that's my item number one to go for. Next up for my support build is Victorious Footsteps. Again, you get some nice stats there. Magical Power, Mana, Mana Regen, Cooldown Reduction. Passive is already pretty nice. Increases movement speed by 5% for allies nearby. And the active is an awesome mobility ability. So movement speed increased by 30% for the hero and ally heroes within range. So you can use that to engage, to hunt down enemies that are trying to run away or to get out of the fight quickly. And overall, with all the benefits of Victorious Footsteps, it's also cheap with only 2,450 gold. Then we go into our next item item number three meta of the high priest is it meta i think so uh good stats so physical and magical defense a little bit of health cooldown reduction uh, what i like about that one is a deactive shield that absorbs x amount of damage to nearby allies for three seconds so i use that when like shit hits the fan or when your allies need help you pop that shield and then you heal them up with nabash's e so that would be my item number three. Then we talk about item number four, Mutant Poe. That's also pretty cheap. And for that price, 2,400 gold, it's awesome. You get some nice stats, some Mana Regen again and cooldown reduction. But its active is really amazing. Transforms a selected enemy hint hero into a mutant for two seconds. The transformed enemy can move but can't use any skills. If you have a strong initiator in the enemy team like a good jungler or a very strong ADC, you can basically pick him out of the fight for two seconds and that will really hurt the damage of the enemy team. And for 2000 400 gold it's just a bargain so usually if you have those items down so victorious footstep and mid of the high priest you're basically set with mute and poe you just get stronger usually uh, the games won't last that long if everything goes to plan so the rest of the items that are coming now is kind of bonus so item number five if you're so far along in the game it's good to get ximia's toy because you get some more physical and magic defense health and cooldown reduction and the passive is just nice if melees get too close to you then item number six is basically not an item but i give you some options depending on the enemy team composition so some items that are pretty nice to have you can also use them early earlier if need be so we have atreus band that's awesome if you want some more self-healing then broken watch that's nice if you want a burst heal and it's also pretty cheap with 2300 embodiment of vengeance that's something you want to pick when you want to do your throwing stick do more damage and then blacksmith's scissors that's very good against teams with a lot of cc because it has a 30 percent tenacity so this would be the items i run with my nabash medic which brings us to the last piece of the puzzle the skill level priority for me and i know some people will say that's wrong you have to level pew first because it's your only damage thing and then i say yes i would level that first if it would actually reduce the cooldown but it's always 10 seconds cooldown so it's not that important for me because damage and killing should be done by your team and not by you as support. Inspirational Anthem. So that's my top priority to heal them up as fast as I can. 
or negate as much damage as I can. Then marching anthem to support my damage dealers do as much damage as possible and to charge down the enemy. Great draw. Yes, the ultimate, that's pretty nice in team fights, especially with the knockback in the end. And as I said, Pew, the stun, you will use that to help your laner in the beginning and also to stun critical opponents in the team fights. But as I said, the cooldown is always 10 seconds and the damage isn't that important for me as a support. So that would be Minor Barsh, Medic build. And now stay with me for some gameplay where I break down how I approach the support role during the laning phase, during mid game and during end game. Okay, so we dive right into the laning phase. I skipped the first part and as you can see uh, how I approach it, I try to support my ADC as much as possible uh, with the heals. This is a situation where I'm low on mana. As you can see, I'm basically out of mana. He runs away and here's the thing that you can still do with your big frame. You try to be in between him and the enemy guys. So if they try to attack, they hit you and not your ADC because you're a bit tankier than him. And he's pretty low. I also use the time to regain some mana and heal him up again a little bit. That was pretty close and again I get in between him and Rampage. I just want to throw Rampage off so I get my ADC out alive and as you can see he gets the kill. Everybody's happy with that. Awesome. Uh, there comes our jungler in. I saw that too late. I don't know if he gets Wraith or not. No, but close. That gives us some breathing room to clear our tower again. They were a bit close to our tower, but actually I love to fight close to our tower most of the time because that gives opportunities for our enemy jung uh, for our jungler. <laughs> Sorry, not for the enemy jungler. For our jungler, if you push too far, then you give opportunities to the enemy jungler. So first item, I upgrade my stone. I get the healing thing as well. And we are back in the lane, level 6 now. I eat the stun from Rampage. As you can say, I just play around my, my ADC. There's counters coming. I try to get in the stun, save him. And again, I pick, I use my body to get in between and body tank that damage, okay? Because he was basically one shot. That saved him. We are like three versus two now. And we just fight around the tower. I don't know if Countess tries to get around and dive from behind on my rem Revenant. That's what I would do, actually. As, I can, as you can see, I'm again low on mana. I just, I just eat the damage. Just save my Revenant. He's trying to heal up a little bit behind the tower. Stun the Rampage. I just try to be annoying and support my guy. And now here's a mistake, okay? I block... Uh, rampage with the tower that's okay to do but it would be actually be better to get in between the tower and rampage so i get hit which means rampage gets aggro from the tower now i do that and rampage has to retreat i was alone i just wanted to defend my tower long enough for some team support coming in and here's team support coming Seraph. she should get the rampage okay i get the rampage that's fine as well normally that's not my job upgrading my skills and now there's three of my team four with me i'm again low on mana i think we should go for the for the spirit now we didn't do that and it's it's into the first item with level seven uh we are a bit behind on that but it's okay and we again in the laning phase just trying to farm something up i saw somebody down there that's why i put the ward there i can't see any anything and the second ward because as you see my my starting item is already at level 2, so that gives me two watches. I so use them. And we are back fighting some. I try to stay close to my ADC, support him with stuns, support him with Q, and heal him up with E. As you can see, I'm at my E is at level 3. That's pretty good already. I see Countess coming in. I missed that she ported. I don't know how, because then I stun her a little bit too late. But it gives at least my ADC time to retreat. But unfortunately, we lose one guy. I think that could have been avoided if I would have been quicker with my stun and actually saw that she's like teleporting. On the other lane, we're also de dominating and the enemy tower is already down. There's another stun going into the Wraith. Revenant. 
Gets some hits in and he kills him. Amazing. So as you see, this stun is great to set up kills for your ADC. And we're still in the laning phase. Level 9 now. I see enemies coming. I know it's more than that's two. There's the jungler. I think it's it's four of them. I'm not sure. And there's my team also coming in. And I join them as a support. So with Q, get the heal up versus the gadget. I miss the stun. Faye pulls them together. That's pretty nice. That's when I use my ultimate. But I'm too far away and I nearly die there. I shouldn't have pushed that far without my team as a support. You want to stay a little bit back behind them. Keep your heal up. Use your Q as often as you can. Here, a nice stun on the enemy. Uh, Feng Mao and he gets killed. That's much better. But as you can see, I'm nearly at 100% health again. Because right now my E is already at max level. Even before I finished my first legendary item. Or my second legendary item after the starting item. So that's pretty good. Pretty strong heal already. As you can see. Now we get that ball really rolling. Uh, we're trying to go for the Prime Guardian because, as I always say, objectives win games in Paragon the Overprime. I see the enemy jungler farming a camp back there, so I let my team know with a ping. Then I go in, support them with, with the Q. I want to save my mana for now, in case a team fight happens. And I don't know why I can't hit that Wraith thing, that seems to be out of range at that height. A bit unfortunate. Now I get a lot of damage. I don't even... Ah, from the Guardian. And then I just stay back a little bit. Pop my heal. Uh, stay behind my team and support them. Try to get a stun in. I missed it. Unfortunate. We get the Prime Guardian. The rest I basically don't care. I just go in like crazy. You shouldn't do that as a support. Okay, bad mistake here. I shouldn't go in there like that and trying to kill something, somebody because I don't have that much damage. I nearly get Feng Mao anyway. But there's the enemy gadget coming and I have to run away. I still get out of life. And as you see here, beautiful, how fast my health already gets up uh, when I'm not attacked. So back into some fighting. Level 11 now, we are solid mid game. I try to stun Wraith. I miss it. I pop my Q so my Fae can run faster and get some damage into Wraith as well and even get the kill. So as you see, I always try to stay around my team, support them, and if shit hits the fan and they retreat, I like slide my body in between them, so I eat the damage and not my squishy ADC, for example. We also have the second item uh, completed now, the second legendary beautiful stun, by the way, from me. The stuns now tend to get better and better that late in the game, okay? I think we should retreat because it's 4 versus 3. And I just stun the charging rampage that is behind us and make some room for my team. So now we get the next item, uh, the meter of the high priest, which gives us an active shield. Or which gives us a shield as an active. That helps. So you can pop the shield and heal your team up with E if necessary. Just some more safety margins. And now I also have uh, three of the wards. So I ward this objective. Then I go through the portal to the prime guardian. Ward that one. So you want to ward, ward, ward. Uh, remember you can already only have two wards up so if you use the third your first will go off the map if I understood that correctly I put another ward here to see if the enemy is actually challenging us if we go for the prime guardian and I already see there's rampage I see wraith back there in lane and you see because of my ward you see them coming already okay uh, that's an unfortunate unfortunate positioning here because I had enemies in between me and my team, I just go to the portal to check if I have to escape or not. Not, I don't have to escape. So it's back in there and support my team with heals and with the Q buff. Then the ultimate on those two. Knocking up Fang. And I think I get the stun in as well right behind it so he can't do anything. A gadget gets some heavy damage on us. But I have a, I have a loads of mana now. And you can see Rampage is coming for me, but I just I just counter heal his damage. As you can see, he stuns me that it like aborts the heal. I put it up again and we are healing up, killing the gadget. Rampage is still behind me, but I like don't care because with, with the items I have now and with the uh, max E, I just counter heal what Rampage could do to me. 
So as you can see, not a problem, and we go for the Prime Guardian again. As you see, the whole enemy team is dead, so that will be an easy Prime Guardian kill and a lot of damage on the enemy inhibitors. And I just let that run because now it's the final phases of the game. It was a solid win. Now I go for a Ximas toy. Finished it up as well. If you go for more legendary items, you should start to, s to sell your mana and health potions. So I am buying Eximia's toy and it's back to uh, team up with my team. And then do the final push, I guess, because the inhibitors, one is down, two are nearly down. So I think it's time for the final push. Yeah, yeah, I guess it is. So I try to connect with my team again and support them with the with the buffs. Here you can see them uh, running. One is, it's not low, but lost some health. We heal her up pretty quickly. There's Faye coming for her heal from good old Nabash. And as you can see, there's no, they have full mana. There's no need to, get, to go back because I just heal them up in a matter of seconds again. Yes, she eats some damage and we heal Faye up again. No problem. So that's really how strong Nabash is when played correctly. When you support your team, inhibitors down. We just stay with them. We keep the heal up, support them with the Q so they have a faster attack speed and movement speed. Uh, that's also pretty helpful when you go for the core or objectives, uh, the Q buff for the fast, faster attack speed. Yeah, and we just stay there in between. Healing, buffing, all the things. They can't really do anything and we kill the core as you see. Nabash, awesome support. Uh, if you want to dive into supports, I recommend trying him. Use that build and always remember, as a support, you're not the guy for the kills. You are the support because that's why it's called support. So we have 18 assists, even two kills, kind of by accident. I died two times, that's okay. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed that video. And if you try the build or if you're a support guy, let me know in the comments what you think about it. And now I hand it over to my outro guy. See you next time. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this little piece of content. And if you want to see more, check the playlist to my left. And if you are more interested in what YouTube algorithm has in pedo for you, then check the one below that playlist. If you like my stuff, please leave a like and help mom's basement grow. See you next time. Dirty Hottie out.